Indeed, the issues of taxation during the 1760s and 1770s were only fruits of the underlying issue, and that is, who was sovereign in America. According to Great Britain, the government had the power to impose its will on the people of America despite the will of the colonies and despite the natural laws governing the compact between the English people and their government. In other words, the government believed that their constitution was living, giving the, power, giving the government power to impose its will on the people without the people's consent. The colonists, however, saw the matter to be an usurpation of their God-given right to be governed by their consent and in compliance with their constitution. The end result, the sovereigns in each colony seceded from the empire of Great Britain because of Great Britain's refusal to follow their constitution. Do sovereigns throughout our states united not see the significance of the issue we are facing today? Are we so blind to history that we cannot compare this scenario to the very scenarios that led to the American Revolution? Are we so ignorant as to the intents and purposes of the U.S. Constitution? Consider that the supreme laws of the land were never meant to be carte, carte blanche powers of the federal government, but instead federal laws were expressly limited by the terms of the compact between and for the states found in the Constitution. This concept of supreme law of the land was expressed by a founding father whom many would consider to be a centralist in belief, Alexander, ha Alexander Hamilton in Federalist Paper Number 27. that the laws of the Confederacy, as to the enumerated and legitimate objects of its jurisdiction, will, be the, will become the supreme law of the land, to the observance in each state will be bound by the sanctity of an oath. Thus the legislatures, courts, and magistrates of the respective members will be incorporated into the operation of the national government as far as its just and constitutional authority extends. Now, Hamilton's legal position concerning the limited power of the federal government and the supreme law of the land was the consensus of the founders, the states, and we the people. Nowhere in America's founding was there the notion that the supreme laws of the land were anything contrary to the compact for the states. The supreme laws of the land are simply those fundamental laws that we the people have created and imposed upon the government to follow and uphold. Of course, the question has been raised over the past 150 years of who has the power to determine whether or not the federal government has usurped their constitutional authority. The popular answer is, wrongfully, the U.S. Supreme Court. God forbid that the sovereigns of each state must wait and rely on nine federal judges to make rulings of this nature before a state would have any legal rights or justification to act in accordance with the will of their sovereigns. Indeed, the ATF interpreted the Constitution unilaterally, without the opinion of the U.S. Supreme Court, and without, the, and without opinion or order denied the constitutionality of Tennessee's Firearms Freedom Act. The, so the sovereigns in each state have the same power, and the historical and legal evidence is plentiful. Consider Thomas Jefferson's position. The states should be watchful to note every material usurpation on their rights, Denounce them as they occur in the most pre peremptory terms. To protest against them as wrongs to which our present submission shall be considered, not as acknowledgments or precedents of right, but as a temporary yielding to the lesser evil, until their accumulation shall overweigh that of separation. Now, I will not attempt to persuade the reader at this point on the fallacious position that only the U.S. Supreme Court can make it a determination of constitutional actions. However, for those who would argue that the U.S. Supreme Court is in fact the only legal means by which a state can say no to the federal government, then I believe that such a person has reached the point of voluntary slavery, and such a person is dangerous to the concepts of federalism, American sovereignty, and constitutional limits and freedom as expressed by thousands of the most influential men in our uh, history. And such a person has accepted only those political means of redress whereby the sovereigns of each state drudge through the treacherous mud of tyranny and get absolutely nowhere. What we are seeing today, and have seen for over a hundred years in America, is the usurpation of the federal government over sovereignty, we the people, and over jurisdiction, the states. While this article cannot begin to expound in depth the true character and nature of the U.S. Constitution, 
A study of history reveals that the U.S. Constitution was an agreement between the sovereigns of each state whereby they acceded to give up only a certain part of their sovereignty for the more perfect union of the people within their states. As with any sovereign people or government, a session may be limited to whatever means and ways necessary to protect the freedom of that society. This is, in fact, uh, what the colonists did in 1776 when declaring independence from, what Great, from Great Britain. What the states did in 1781 when ratifying the Articles of Confederation. And what the states did in 1787 when ratifying the U.S. Constitution. It was the sovereigns, through their respective states, who declared their natural rights under God, who secured their natural rights through independence from governments, and who expressed that any act outside of their consent is tyranny. When this recognition resounds in the hearts and minds of the people, as our Declaration of Independence states, it is the right of the people to alter or abolish it, and to institute a new government, laying its foundation on such principles and organizing its powers in such form, as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Do you really think that after only 11 years from the signing of the Declaration of Independence that those same people who risked everything for independence from those living constitutionalists in Great Britain and who believed in the principles seen in the Articles of the Confederation would have completely renounced their understanding of the Confederacy and Federalism and would have resigned the same and delegated all of their powers that they fought and died to secure for each state and for their citizens? If you think so silly a notion, you severely impose injustice upon the intelligence and intentions of our fathers, or founding fathers. However, the record is clear that the sovereigns of each state never ceded to the federal government powers not expressly vested to it, and never waived the ability to reclaim that power through their proper channels, the states, the same channels by which the U.S. Constitution was ratified. Uh, consider the sovereign's voice in the state of Virginia in 1787. We, the delegates of the people of Virginia, do in the name and in behalf of the people of Virginia, declare and make known that the powers granted under the Constitution, being derived from the people of the United States, may be resumed by them whensoever the same shall be per perverted to their injury or oppression, and that every power not granted thereby remains with them and at their will, that therefore no right of any denomination can be cancelled, abridged, restrained, or modified by the Congress, by the Senate or House of Rep Representatives acting in any capacity, by the President or any Department or Officer of the United States, except in those instances in which power is given by the Constitution for those purposes. However, the federal government today does not recognize the sovereignty in the people of the respective states. It does not recognize the respective states' jurisdiction over all matters not expressly delegated to the federal government, and it does not seem to acknowledge state sovereignty under the Tenth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Given their evident intent and purposes to continually grow in power and to continually oppress and suppress the sovereignty of we the people against our respective states, the question becomes, how will they be made to understand this? It is, of course, up to the sovereigns in each state to answer this question. And we see the answers arriving through state laws such as the Firearms Freedom Act. The time has come in America where to be free necessarily means to resist the status quo and federal usurpation and to actively change the course and philosophy being shoved down our throats. There really is no middle ground anymore. This is not a matter of politics anymore. This is not a matter of Republican and Democrat. This is a matter of freedom. As much as so as were the matters of 1775 and 1776. It is, starting, it is staring you in the face, daring you to make a move. May we never be guilty of causing, whether by our apathy, indifference, laziness, or comfort, this nation to lose the freedoms that our founders attempted to secure with an infinite pains and labors. We the people must once again reassert our sovereignty in this country, and the states must recognize and act upon their God-ordained role as freedom protectors and tyranny resistors. <laughs>